Hello again and welcome to our second of three programs that we are excited to bring to you on the forum regarding homelessness. It is not only that it is a complicated issue and one that deserves a lot of thought, but it's one that also deserves many, many different ways to look at it. So we have mixed up our panel a little bit from last week, and we also have clips that are totally different from the ones you watched last week. But our guests are two of them the same. To my left is Gregory Barfield, who is for 10 years at least totally involved in the housing issue, and right now he is the Fresno Homeless Prevention Manager and very responsible for ending homelessness as best he can in our lifetime. And secondly, across would be Lisa Apper, who for 40 years already has been involved with Catholic Worker Movement and since 1997 has made her home with Brian a Catholic Worker House, St. Benedict's Catholic Worker. We're so glad to have you, Lisa, here today. Glad to be here. And across is Mike Rhodes, who wants to be known for all of his adult life, <laughs> committed passionately in so many different ways to all social and economic justice issues. And the way to see that is to look on his um, wonderful Community Alliance, where monthly we will be covering the issues that are so deep in the heart of Mike and Pam. So thank you very, very much. I wonder if we could begin by having each one of you once again explain to our viewers why homelessness burns in your heart as an issue and why you are committed to advocate against it and to work for its ending. I think the, the key is because there's someone out there whose name I know, whose story I know, whose um, struggle I know uh, that still is without housing. And my goal is to get that person into housing. Beautiful. What a beautiful personal way, Gregory. Thank, Thank you. you. Lisa, you've been at this a long time now. Why are you still at it? I think because Dorothy Day in 1933 set the precedent, especially within the Catholic Church, of caring for the least of our brothers and sisters yeah. by uh, taking the corporal works of mercy seriously, by providing home, by feeding the hungry, by clothing the naked. And it was her inspiration that continues to inspire me today. And as Greg so rightly said, people that we know, people like Big Sue and Pam Kincaid who stayed at our house and who ate in our soup line and who were not, not charity cases but friends, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lisa. Mike. Simply because homelessness can be ended, and it's it's a something that exists in our community, and there is a solution to it. And I'm continue to do this because I want to see an end to people living on the streets. What a panel! Now there's one other person who couldn't be here physically, but we went to his uh, office at the POV, and that's Papa Mike McGarvin. Why don't we see what Mike said when I asked him to give us a little overview of the history of homelessness as he sees it in Fresno. The biggest problem at that time in the probably 70s to 80s was uh, the alcohol was a big problem. Um, I'm sure the drugs were around, but uh, the ones I dealt with on the streets uh, definitely was alcohol. And as I got into the 80s and 90s, of course, you had crack come in. Uh, it was, uh, and of course, the drinking was still prevalent going on. Going up to uh, 90s to around 2000 and su such, it's uh, a lot of... Uh, Meth that was uh, most popular took over. Uh, the mental illness uh, came on. I had a few people that I dealt with in the early days, but it just kept uh, growing and growing, and today it's really, uh, really pretty bad. Um, there's just so many more, and uh, I guess the times uh, where they're shut down programs and uh, such like that uh, has caused them to uh, no place to go, particularly. And uh, we try to deal with them best we can. 
And we have the uh, families, of course. Uh, in the early 70s, 80s, hardly had any families, uh, just a very few. And today, uh, we have quite a few uh, show up for our meals. Mike gave us a capsule, obviously, of his experience of how it's evolved. Do any of you have a, a little different um, personal experience of where it's morphed over these years? Just how epidemic it's become, just how more drastic it seems it is. Well, I, th I think anybody that drives down into that area of, by the Pavarello House and the mm -hmm. rescue mission will get a sense of how large this issue is in Fresno. And, and I have to say that, uh, you know, Pavarello does a good job of feeding people, but it doesn't end homelessness. It, it, it is a Band-Aid on a, on a situation that prevents it maybe from getting even worse than it is, but it is not the solution. It, it's a, uh, you know, providing people simply with uh, food and uh, clothing sometimes isn't enough. It's, it's not enough of, of a structural prob uh, solution to the problem. Uh, to end homelessness. So we have to move beyond that. I, I think it's, it's, that is a paradigm that we've been stuck with for 20 or 30 years of just dealing with the ramifications of homelessness without moving beyond that to say what will end homelessness. That doesn't end homelessness, and the proof is by going out there and seeing what it looks like. Mike and Doreen, uh, Eli, who are there presently at the POV, would like to speak right now about some of the things that they have been engaged in over the years. And Mike may have already given us a little um, <clears throat> warning that it isn't the solution, but let's look at the strides that they would say have been their direction over the many years. So Mike McGarvin and Doreen Eli. Our founder, Mike McGarvin, talked about some of the services that we do. He talked a little bit about, you know, the meals. We have showers. We have laundry. We have some social services. Um, and housing, in addition to the Mike McGarvin Village of Hope and the Community of Hope, we also have an overnight shelter for single women at Naomi's house. And, but it should not be said that Pavarello House does all of these things by itself. We have some great partnerships with other organizations, including the city and the county of Fresno, um, Marjorie Mason Center, Catholic Charities, or just so many other organizations that we partner with on just about a daily basis to do the work that we do and assist them in doing the work that they do. In the early days, I was involved with St. Vincent de Paul, and um, each church that had one in there um, would usually donate a little something towards the homeless, and that would allow me to get a motel for a day or two for a family, something like that. And we've uh, kept that that way, uh, dealing with uh, not having an exact spot for having uh, families to come in and stay for a period of time. It's very costly. It's 24-7. And uh, But we did open up, and like I said, we got the men in the drug rehab. There's about 28, maybe 30 Five, if you count uh, the Pico House we have for the guys who are ready to exit our program. So it's um, those two areas, I think, have been the biggest uh, kind of expansion. And I think down the road, if we decide to um, open up further, we're, we're looking at some uh, ideas of uh, maybe uh, some expansion and uh, if we can, we'll, we'll make a, one more stab at it, giving a little more uh, area for people to uh, have a place to stay. We have our little tough sheds that uh, it's an emergency uh, plan. It's not a temporary situation. We're not planning to go any probably further than that. It just takes the edge off and gives them some safety out there on the streets, and and uh, that's gone along pretty good. I actually thought in the beginning we'd have a lot of problems with it, and we, they were, it's, that program really surprised me. I, I, um, but uh, today they've had guys have gone on and gone on and taken some courses, uh, uh, truck driving and welding and this, and 
get their lives back together a little and hook up with the families, and that's always a nice thing. Lisa and Gregory, I wonder if um, you also would share the idea that these things are necessary and things that Lisa hasn't even told us some of the things she's been doing, Mm -hmm. Um, but long range, what more are you convinced we need to be doing way beyond what's been done? So with either of those ideas of the success of what's been accomplished and the need to move on with a new plan. Well, I think, Jim, it's really important to know that, and it was said in the earlier program, that it's going to take more than a village to do this. It's not just about what we tell government or the city to do, but what we ourselves and how we change our hearts and minds to the homeless. What is our response as a church community and as individuals I know at the Catholic Worker, we do something simple as to tell people to have McDonald's coupons in their car and to give them out to people, uh, to engage in conversation with a homeless person, to educate yourself on the issue. And then, you know, all these other resources, church, government, can work together to end this. For us, as a Catholic Worker, we were involved in the Kincaid versus the City of Fresno lawsuit, and I, uh, where we won $1.4 million dollars. And having that kind of money to to uh, manage for the homeless claimants, uh, we had 325 claimants. I saw some real change, and what 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 money can do, but also what care and treating people as a brother, your brothers and sisters can do. People like uh, Brian Stewart, who took his money and bought a truck with it, started his own repair business got involved in drug rehab and now has a house and repairs houses and finances Mm -hmm. his whole ministry of drug rehabilitation through his work. Uh, Starling example. And lots of people who, when given an opportunity, given a chance, and like Mike makes, Mike McGovern makes a point that people are victims, the poor always pay first. And this economic belt tightening we've had Uh, the economic downturn, it's the poor that get the first hit. And when given an opportunity, when given some resources, people blossom and uh, they do well. Once again, I've gotten the signal that we are half through our program, which does mean the upside is we'll be back in one minute to continue this conversation with you. So please, don't go anywhere. We are going to come right back. KNXC thanks all its loyal viewers and respected businesses who have supported your Catholic television station. Now you can support KNXT with program underwriting by having your name, your company's name, or organization associated with your favorite program. Detailed information about you or your company will appear before and after each program or day part you select. Keep the quality and spiritual message alive and make a difference. Call 559-488-7440 today or go online at knxt.tv to find out more about program underwriting on KNXT. Hello and welcome back to the second half of our second program on homelessness in the Diocese of Fresno and what it is that we can do about it. Now I'd like to begin the second half of the program with uh, Doreen Eli sharing her response to the question that I asked her, what is the best thing the city's done regarding the homeless? And then wonder if our panel would respond to Doreen's enthusiasm. Let's see what she said. That is actually the 10-year plan to end homelessness. I mean, this was a federal initiative that came down the pike, I want to say, a number of years ago. And this city and county actually got together, two groups that don't traditionally always talk to each other, and really got something that was jurisdictionally led. Um, Also with a lot of community input, Um, there were some homeless individuals who were on the planning council. I was honored to be on the planning council. Um, Lots of other people and really put together a document that I think that this entire city and county can get behind and at least a start in talking about homelessness, what it really is, who it really affects, and what we do about it as a community. I, I think I just have to ask Mike first your basic feeling about the 10-year plan and what's happened so far and realizable what's going to happen in the rest of the time. I don't think 
following that plan in 10 years or however many years we have left, homelessness will end because there's not enough of a commitment to housing the homeless and providing them with the services that they need to get their lives back. And that's what's needed. We need like a Marshall Plan to mobilize people to provide housing. The housing is there. There's all the housing you'd possibly want in Fresno. It's just vacant. It's abandoned or foreclosed upon. Mm -hmm. And the political and economic system cannot put the people into the housing that, that they need. Mm -hmm. So much more needs to be done in order for us to end homelessness. I, I think that the city has changed courses, but they need to ramp it up a lot in order to end homelessness. Mm -hmm. Gregory got a... I was going to say, I, I think the key is, is not the, the plan. I think the plan helped solidify the political will. Uh, but I think the key is that we are providing housing. Um, and in this, we're able to now share some of the stories and some of the, the learnings that we we found and also that uh, 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 and share that with the public. I think that is now uh, allowing us this engagement with the community because this is not just a government solution. It's got mm -hmm. to be the government. It's got to be the church. It's got to be all of us working together. And whether you uh, agree with all aspects of the plan, the key part of it is providing housing. And so we ought to be focused focusing and marshaling our efforts toward that, that end. Now, one option out there for housing is Art Dyson's. And I'd like to have you hear from a homeless person who is a champion of um, the homeless in town, Al Williams. Let's let him tell us why he is so excited about Art Dyson's Eco Village proposal, the project that he's working on. Art Dyson Eco Village Project uh, actually began in 2007 when him, R. Dyson, and myself stood on the task force that the city put together to, uh, to end homelessness in 10 years. Uh, at that time, R. Dyson came over to Eco Village Project, and since then it has progressed up to actually participating, having colleges like Fresno State last semester participated in putting together several demonstration studio size apartments for homeless people to live in. And uh, at the present, the only thing we need is uh, a piece of land. We have uh, four colleges that will be participating in this project starting next semester, at uh, which will be Fresno State, Fresno City, Pacific College, and Sequoia College. And the only thing lacking in this is a piece of land. And the city, for some reason, the city prefers to go a different route with uh, developers and other, other people of that nature, which isn't going to solve the problem of homelessness. You know, I could bring on the panel at this point because they're just ready to say something. <laughs> but Al has a follow-up response to the next question when I said, so what is holding back the commitment of the city towards this project. Let's see what Al says and then finally let the panel weigh in on the whole idea of what Art Dyson would like to do and also why the brakes are on it. So let's hear Al one more time. It's my, my belief, my personal belief that the city, the mayor, the city council and people of that nature, elected officials, have what we call owner operators, which are developers. And they kind of tell the city what to do because of the money factor. And they have turned homelessness into a business, and they prefer to give money, fill developers' pockets with money, other than to do something that's going to cost the city virtually nothing, such as the eco village. And the price of a piece of land, which the city has already, is very inexpensive because they don't have to purchase it, they already have it. All they have to do is give us the land, we'll put the buildings up, we'll move people in, we'll supply jobs for people, and it's a simple solution, but they prefer to go with spending millions of dollars, which they have in the last five or six years. Having that Al got most of his stuff on the table already, Gregory, is there some sort of a response to the idea of what might be more likely holding back the possibility of moving on with this wonderful Eco Village proposal. I think the key with Eco Village, uh, it's, it's a great concept, but the, really the key is about our current zoning and building codes. 
plain and simple. Uh, it, it, there's, there's nothing hidden about that. Um, and the dialogue will continue. Um, uh, Mr. Dyson is, I know, working with our planning and development uh, to, uh, folks about the, uh, the building codes and the zoning issues. Uh, and I think this semester coming up will be very interesting because I think our folks will learn a lot, too. Good. Mm -hmm. I think once again, too, we're talking about support for the from the community. That's why programs like this are so important, because when the grassroots, when the people speak and, and in support of something like this project and get involved in it, then the game changes. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we begin to act like a community that takes care of the people that have, as Mike had said in the other program, the least. And uh, I really think it's very important for those watching this program to say, you know, personally ask the question, what can I do? Mm -hmm. Can I write a letter to the mayor and say, what about this Echo Village? Can I bring it up in my church community and say, what can our church community do to support this? Um, you know, there's many ways to do it, but it has to, you know, has to come from the community. And then, you know, government will respond. I don't think it's up to the developers if the people speak out. Mm -hmm. Mike. The eco villages are a concept that is very nice housing for the homeless. It's uh, sustainable housing. Mm -hmm. It is much nicer than the tool sheds, which the city and Pavarello has already like blessed. And the concept is that people would live together in a, in a little colony, and maybe they're all artists, or they're you know they have a certain uh, trade in common and that they could live together, work together, uh, build a economic engine and then move on from beyond there so that they're no longer homeless. And in the meantime, it costs next to nothing to run the eco-villages because they're run on solar panels and passive heating and cooling. It's, it's a great concept and I would really encourage the city to uh, you know, break out any obstacles uh, that's in front of that so that this can be a part of the mix of solutions to homelessness. You know, um, the title of um, Mike's uh, article, Can We End Homelessness in Fresno? Um, let me just ask a uh, uh, yes or no answer, and then you can get a sentence or two to flesh it out. So, Mike, you're up first. Can Fresno end this situation? Absolutely. It the way to end homelessness is to put homeless people in housing. In addition to that, you're going to need to have some social services so that they can deal with it, whatever problems they had that made them homeless in the first place. Mm -hmm. But it's absolutely possible to do if we prioritize it. Lisa, you're sure too. Yes, I am. And, and Mike, I support what Mike said. It's our, in our priorities. If we as a community, as the grassroots person watching this program can say yes, I want to be a part of this. It can it can happen, and we can be. We're only limited by our imaginations as to the kind of housing and opportunities and supportive services, like Mike said, that will end hopeless, homelessness. So I say yes. Gregory, where are you? Well, oh, I strongly agree of that course. that we can't we can do this, and, and not only because it's my job to help implement the plan, but I just know the spirit of our community. Our community is one of those that. Uh, when we marshal all of our resources together and make it a priority, our mm -hmm. community comes through. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and I think the bishops charge to, to the church, I think where the city and the county are moving toward, and I think a, as this is coming together, mm -hmm. I see uh, us moving in a direction where we're going to end homelessness in our community. Doreen, and I, uh, Doreen Eli answered my question, what can people actually do to end homelessness? And here's what she said. Let's see if we agree. First thing is to think about it differently. When you see a homeless person, you need to understand that they did not wake up one morning and decide to throw everything away and to be on that corner, in that tent, or down here at Pav needing a meal. That's not what happened. It's a series of decisions. It's a series of all kinds of factors. There are people down here that simply had a catastrophic illness, and that could happen to any one of us at any time, and they lost everything because of it. There are others that had some horrible things that happened in their childhood that were never addressed properly. It led them to self-esteem issues, to substance abuse issues, to mental health issues, that, and that could have happened to 
anyone. So when you see a homeless person, the first thing you should not do is judge. You should really look at you have no idea how they got there. The second thing you should think is there but for the grace of God go I. And then the third thing is to really get involved. You can get involved so many different ways. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. You can volunteer down here at Pavarello House, or you can throw a check in the mail. Um, as our founder said, 71 cents gets you a full meal. Even McDonald's can't do that. I want to thank Doreen for that stirring final thought, Mike McGarvin for what he shared earlier, to Mike Rhodes and to Lisa Apper and to Gregory Barfield, to Bill Simon, for everyone who has been on this program sharing. It's been exciting, it's been inspiring, and it's been very um, positive because we are seeing that they're all echoing the conviction. This is a problem that is able to be resolved. It will take time, it will take effort, it'll take commitment, it'll take a change in priorities, it'll be taking a change in the way we look at how we live and how we look at others living. I think what we'll want to do right now is challenge you to get committed in some positive way to not just watch a program like this, but to decide I'd like to do something about it. Now the place we'd like to send you to is knxt.wordpress.com. If you go to that site, you will be able to give a response to our issue on homelessness. You'll be able to register your commitment. You'll be able to let us know you see uh, further possibilities for the diocese to be involved in this issue. We want to thank you for being here today. We want to thank our distinguished and very positive panel. And we want to invite you back next week when we visit with people from Merced about the issues there. Till